Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We're here in Waikiki Beach. It's a beautiful day here in the islands. We have a big surf yesterday and today, so all the surfers are happy. As soon as I'm done with this interview, I'll be joining my friend Don from California who's visiting. We're going to go out and get some waves. But my wife always likes for me to start uh, the show off by making the sign of the cross in Hawaiian because she loves it so much. Mika'ino o kamaku. I made it, did it wrong. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. You know, I'll just say, say briefly, you know, I, I uh, you know, we surf regularly and we just, we're just worse water people. But I have the, Cindy and I have the habit about, um, of going out uh, once a day, like mid afternoon, uh, <clears throat> when work is getting kind of heavy, we'll go for a walk. And then I, I go out and I, I tread water uh, just beyond where the waves are for about an hour. And during that last, she comes out with me for about 40 minutes and then maybe half half hour but during that time after she goes in i spend my time just just saying uh focusing on either the father or either the son or, or either the holy spirit and just drawing closer into intimacy with them but one thing i haven't done i guess i did it once is i haven't um taken the time to to have a devotion to mary while i'm out there and so i brought we have with us with us today as our guest uh, Father Edward Looney, and he is the pastor of Sacred Heart Parish in somewhere in Wisconsin, and he is a Marian theologian. So he's going to, this is going to be a really important day for me personally, and I think it will be for you too as we start to understand more of what our relationship is with our mother. Uh, Father Edward, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Yeah, thanks, Bear, for having me. I know I just uh, talked with you, recorded an episode for my own podcast, and uh, grateful now to uh, be on your show. And how can people find your podcast? Yeah, it's called How They Love Mary. So How They Love Mary is a book, but it's also a podcast. It's there as a podcast, and then eventually I wrote a book of the same title. So they can find it wherever they, they listen to podcasts. And how about the book? Where can they find the book? Yeah, it's, pub it's published by Sophia Institute Press. So uh, wherever fine Catholic books are sold, hopefully you'll be able to find it. Oh, that's excellent. Those rookies at Sophia, the same publishers of, of my books, too. We love we, those. You know, Father, aren't those people at Sophia amazing people? Yeah, it's a wonderful publishing company. I, I've had the pleasure of working with a lot of different Catholic publishers and uh, really have never had a bad experience in that realm. Oh, that's good. To, that's good to hear. That's good to hear. Yeah, I just have a, I just have a, I just feel like they just take such good care of me. So, Father Edward, we'd like to know, <clears throat> first of all, your journey. Uh, toward, to to um, to your walk with the Lord, to the priesthood, and how how it is that you uh, your 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 understanding of 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 loving Mary. Yeah, so I guess Mary is responsible for my priestly vocation. We could say that, but uh, yeah, I grew up in a parish, so a little town called Oconto, Wisconsin. Uh, it's a uh, uh, yeah, it was four thousand people there about, and uh, one of the one of the people in my hometown had a great devotion to Mary. Took a lot of people on pilgrimages to a place of reported Marian apparition, and so uh, her son became a priest. And I went with her on this pilgrimage that she was organizing with her son, and so that was just kind of one of those profound moments as a sixteen-year-old. Uh, going on a pilgrimage across the pond, going to a site of a Marian apparition. Where was this? Uh, well, I don't normally say because it's not approved by the well, church. Well, then let's let's not say it. Let's not say yeah. it. Yeah. People can read between the lines, you know. From I know. I think I know what, what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's a, a profound place of prayer, and so many people have gone there. They've experienced conversions, uh, and. You know, you, you could go to Lourdes, like I've been to Lourdes now personally five or six times, and you know, what I saw in that one place at 16, I see in Lourdes too, and you know, we just had the World Youth Day with the Holy Father, and uh, I wasn't there, 
but I, I saw some coverage of it and you know how incredible to see all these young people going to Fatima and I, I couldn't help but maybe think of my own experience as a youth going to a, a Marian apparition place and uh, what profound what profundity there is there of asking Mary as a young person and and I think Mary's words even were the theme of uh, the World Youth Day so um, yeah so anyways just uh, in my life, uh, I came from a broken home. Uh, my mother and father separated before I was born. Uh, my mother lived with my grandmother, and my grandmother really raised me. My mother was working or out there doing whatever she was doing. And so uh, my grandma began taking me to daily mass as a young kid. Really? To daily mass? Yeah, <laughs> when I'm, during the summers when you want to have school. And I would be going there uh, in fourth grade. I'd serve mass. And... That was really the beginning of, of kind of the idea of priesthood. And uh, the idea recurred. And when I went to that place in Europe, uh, just I thought, wow, the faith is so tangible, so real, so alive. Uh, and then in my own diocese, I'm a priest in the diocese of Green Bay, Wisconsin. And the Blessed Mother appeared in Champion, Wisconsin. What's, uh, what, to what's, the, what's the name of that, that place? I bet we, we rode uh, up there on our motorcycles. Sure. So uh, lots of people probably know it as the National Shrine of Our Lady of Good yes. Help. Yeah. But the yes. bishop just changed the name from Our Lady of Good Help, uh, which was kind of the, the name for many years, uh, to Our Lady of Champions. So kind of going oh. to the, uh, the name of the city. So oh. the city where the shrine is is Champion. So it became Our Lady of Champion then. And uh, that was... Uh, uh, just a, a few months ago, he did that. But uh, so that Marian apparition site really has played a, a key part in my life. And uh, I went there right after that pilgrimage in Europe. And just again, uh, it, it was one of those days where thousands of people had gathered for the Assumption Feast Day. And it, it just was a moment where I'm like, maybe I'm supposed to be a priest. And uh, I, I did what I thought I was supposed to do. And so I discerned and went off to the seminary right out of high school. But uh, it didn't work out. Uh, after just one semester, I said, I don't know if this is what I'm supposed to do. So I left the seminary uh, and, and really thought I'd never look back, thought I'd never go back to that way of life. And, you know, still went to church, obviously, and whatnot. But but just being a priest, I didn't think it was for me. And uh, But uh, that that call was still there. And I kept going to that shrine. And I thought about joining an order. And uh, as I was applying to join that religious community, the psalm at Mass, and I was actually at the Shrine in Champion, the, the psalm that day was, Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. And I took that quite literally, like, this is the people. These are the people that I know. These are the people I'm called to serve. Oh, so, Father, that's let, beautiful. I, that is so profound. Yeah, it was... That's the, why I stayed in the diocese of Green Bay and persevered through six years of study and now eight years of priesthood. Well, you know, we I have a special fondness for that place, too. We were riding our motorcycles with the Knights on Bikes uh, in the Cle from Cleveland with the Catholic Cross Bears over to uh, Michigan with the Knights on Bikes. They had their big annual meet up there. And then some of us, maybe 20 of us, rode up along the to the Mackinac Bridge. And on the way, we went to the, the place called the, the Cross in the Woods. Is that what it's called? Beautiful. Yeah, and then we went up or over the lake, and then we came back all the way down the other side of... What is that lake, anyway? Is that Lake Superior, Lake Michigan? What is that? Or, what is it? Uh, well, yeah, maybe Lake Superior. There's well, a point where it switches. But, yeah, so okay. Lake Superior would be in uh, the UP, because well, we, I've been up to Marquette, and, uh, yeah. Yeah, Marquette. Lake yeah, so we ended up, back, we ended up uh, at, at that shrine, Our Lady of Champion now, as it's called. And had a chance to go and pray and have that have our time there. It was kind of like after a really long ride, long you know, lots of riding from uh, Florida uh, all the way over to there, and uh, and so that was just like there was just felt like a great kind of respite while we were there. So we're talking with Father um, Edward Looney. He is the pastor of Sacred Heart in a town I can't pronounce in Wisconsin. What's the name of the town, Father? Shauna. Shauna is that how you say it? Shauna. Yep. Shauna. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, and uh, you can be your podcasts are found where anywhere podcasts are heard and it's called uh, how they love Mary is the principal podcast that I do and uh, I did a reading too one year of the mystical city of God 
mm. uh, by Andrea Vagreda. And uh, so that was like a 365. And, you know, you can find that, too, anywhere. That's so well. cool. That's so cool. Um, so we'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure and Father Edward Looney. And we're going to be going into more of a deeper discussion of Marian theology and how you can uh, go deeper in your faith with the Lord through, uh, through that devotion relationship with Mary. Be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Now you can journey with other men on the adventure of a lifetime, growing in manly virtue through Bear's Man Cave community in our three-year school of manliness. Join at deepadventure.com. Better yet, you can lead your own sons through the same compelling video, audio, and written content. Can you imagine how much deeper your relationship with your dad could have been and how much more you could have learned and pitfalls you might have avoided if your dad had a tool like this to help to draw you both into a deeper, life-changing discussion. Now you have a trigger that you can pull that will take you into gritty discussions with other men and with your sons at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link, or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on amazon.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Uh, my wife is, I just love my wife. She has such, such wonderful discernment and, 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 and inspiration for me. My new book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone, is based on a, Cindy and I were driving the, around Diamond Head about two years ago, and she, she, she said, listen to this song, you're going to love it. And she turned it up, and it was a song, the, the, basically the chorus is, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? Where is my John Wayne? And it's just the cry of, of women of a woman that really needs for wants to have a man who really is a man in her life and whenever we go and speak uh, people women surround us when Cindy's with me and we're not, I'm not unless I'm speaking to men's groups of course but the first thing they'll do before we can even unload things from the as we open up the trunk of the car they're there and they're asking us please tell the men we need for them to be men and so I'm gonna uh, talk a little bit about one chapter every every uh, podcast here or every radio show here for a moment um, as the book is about to come out, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? You can buy it anywhere books are sold in Amazon, published by Sophia. One of the f chapters I have in here, one of the rules is riding for the brand. <clears throat> men, uh, men, you need to be able to, people need to identify, uh, you should, pe people should know that you're a Christian. There used to be the, that secret way of identifying Christians by, you know, kind of drawing that half circle of the fish and then someone else tracing the other side so people could identify each other as Christians. Um, it was a brand. It's a Christian brand. The cross is a brand. Do people know, do everyday people know that you're a Christian? Do, does, does the way you live your life, does the joy that you have, does the love that you show, that really evidence that you're riding for the brand? So one of my 12 rules for manliness is is, is ride for the brand, be faithful to God. After all, all the cattle on a thousand hills belong to the Lord. So be faithful to the Lord that you, who you ride for. We're talking today with Father Edward Looney from uh, Sacred, he's the pastor at Sacred Heart uh, Parish in Shauna, Wisconsin. 
So you know he's gritty if he lives in Wisconsin. Uh, and we're going to talk. We're going to visit more about your your joining the coming to the priesthood. You're called to the priesthood and your your love for Mary. So you went to the priest. You went to the seminary. <clears throat> you just found out it wasn't for you, and then you had this kind of re, re, restart, the reset button on that when you were at the shrine of Our Lady in Champion. Yeah, you know, kind of another story to that is is that uh, you know when I left the seminary, I thought that you know what I, I've always loved politics, I love media, so I thought you know maybe I'd be a political journalist, maybe I'd be a politician. So that's what I went to college for: political science and 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 media studies. And yeah, uh, I was working a political campaign, and it was an election season, and I just was standing there in the you know the the victory celebration that wasn't a victory celebration and we were just watching all of the results come in and there was just this really like sour moment of 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 wallowing in a sense like everything we've worked for everything we've accomplished in the pro-life movement like with a strike of a pen it's going to be reversed and and uh, there was just a moment for me I, I just remember being so like defeated that I thought to myself is this really worth it you know should should I really pursue this for the rest of my life, these ups and downs and the valleys of, of that type of a life? Because obviously the people you work for aren't always going to win. And uh, and so I kind of just thought to myself, surely there's something that's better, something that's uh, more certain. And that, you know, obviously is eternal life. And that is uh, following the Lord and uh, leading souls to heaven. And so that was kind of the the prompting to to rethink about going back to the seminary kind of after experiencing a little dissatisfaction with the temporality the temporariness of uh the life that i wanted and uh and so now you know uh as a priest it's when you celebrate the sacraments when you uh anoint someone before their death you know that's that's what really matters i found so uh, that that was kind of how god worked in my own life to bring me back to uh, that call to the priesthood. Yeah, you know, my dad is a deacon in the Catholic Church. Uh, and he, He's passed away now, but he, uh, he used to tell the story of the guy who had lived such a great life that uh, he said, hey, God, you know, I've lived such a great life, and I know I can't bring anything with me to heaven, but could you just let me bring, can you just make an exception? And God said, oh, all right, yeah, you can bring something material with you to heaven. And uh, so he gets to heaven, and uh, St. Peter's there, and he goes, uh, I don't know, you should have a special note, you know, for my reservation. Uh, God the Father said that I could bring something with me. He goes, oh, no, no, you're not allowed to bring anything with you. Just You just come, come as you are. You're not allowed to bring any material things with you. And then he said, well, just look and see. And he looked at this note, and God said, oh, yeah, there's a special note here. You can, you, the only exception I've ever heard of, you can bring something material with you. So can I ask what you brought? And he, 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 he turned around, and he had this wheelbarrow full of gold bricks, Solid gold bricks, and Peter's reaction was, "What you brought pavement?" <laughs> but there is something that we can take to heaven with us. The fact is, there is. The only thing that we can take with us is other people, and so to ha- so to have a, a a life work of sharing the good news and the love of God, and that God has a plan for people's lives. That's the nature of what a priest is. And so you made a decision. There's room for people in, in the political realm. But in our own work, we don't do a lot with politics here. We'll speak to moral things. But we are desirous to convert people's hearts to Jesus, and then everything else follows. Yeah, and that's the hope, too. You know, as you preach the message uh, of the Lord, that hearts are changed. And so, you know, when, when it comes to the pro-life cause, there there was an individual that, always would say you know i would love it if abortion ended not because of a law ending it but because nobody desired it or no one wanted it you know and and that could be said for anything you know i wish pornography would end because then because not because it's illegal but because people don't want it that they've realized what the good life really is so mm. and that's what we what you know you are trying to do through your own work that's what I, as a priest, am trying to do as well uh, to to bring souls to heaven. It's an interesting thing, Father, to be uh, to be a Catholic priest. You, you brought up the word the word pornography. It's a, a good example. 
Uh, they they interviewed Protestant pastors. How many many of you many of your men have a challenge with the pornography? And they said, oh, maybe ten, fifteen percent. And then they asked Catholic priests, and they said, oh, maybe half. In other words, because ca- Catholics go to confession. Uh, what what what? How powerful of a ministry of mercy is that in the confessional for you? Yeah, you know, a person coming to confession. Uh, they always are responding to the movement of God in their life. Like they know that they've sinned, they and that's what brings them there. There, they know that. Well, I have fallen short of the glory of God, and I want to be restored to the glory of God. And so I am confessing my sins, and and the Lord has given that authority to the to the priest to uh, to forgive sins in His name and in His person. And and uh, there's there there's always something restorative there because the person is restored to grace and. And, you know, even for myself as a person that goes to confession, like there's always a weight that's lifted every time that you go to confession. And so um, it, it's underappreciated, uh, of course, by the people of God. But uh, for those who make regular uh, celebration of it, it, it's life changing for them and, yeah. and they become better people as a result. And, and we realize that God is giving grace. So there's sacramental graces that are coming to us through the sacrament of reconciliation. And that grace is going to make us a better Christian and a better follower of Jesus. I'll tell you what, Father, so many really gritty, gnarly men that I know, and their, their return to Christ started in a confessional. They finally got gritty enough and real enough to go to confession. And then something, God met them there at that point of humility. And, uh, and it, it's that it's that place where they say they begin to they begin their walk with God. Yeah, and there's something to be said about that because uh, to begin that walk with God, I, I think you need to let go of the past. And so, as you are able to unburden and to unload those sins, well, that makes you freer to be able to follow uh, the Lord and His teachings. You know, there's someone listening right now that, that's that been thinking about going to confession. It's a very, very difficult and nervous thing to do. I can I, I say going to confession is kind of like skydiving. You know, you kind of nervous on your way to the skydive site, and then you, you're putting on this, this, this backpack uh, you hope is a parachute, and then you get in the airplane, and it's very, it's very, um, um, it's gnarly. I mean, I've never jumped without feeling scared you know but one time i was i was going to jump with one of my sons and i was going to wait to be with him uh i wanted him to jump and then me to jump after him and catch up with him so i could be in be uh under canopy near where he was and watch him and we we ended up having so many people get out of the plane that we had gotten out of the uh the drop zone and we had to circle and come back so there was my son attached to his jive mass jump master myself and another young man who was T- uh, attached to his jump master it was time for this young man to go to jump out of the plane and what happened was he lost his bowels in that plane and he never jumped he was so nervous and so scared that he lost his bowels jeremiah jumped and i jumped and by the way when someone does that you're very looking forward to jumping out of the plane you know you want to get away from that smell that's what it's like everybody when you're when you when you don't go to confession you're just that guy in that airplane that isn't willing to take a leap of faith and you're just you're, you're stinking up the place dude let your sins are sticking sticking up your life go to confession make that leap and i'll tell you what there's nothing more freeing or more exhilarating i've very rarely seen a video of someone jumping who didn't have this look of complete excitement and ecstasy uh, on their way down and when you land you feel like you can conquer the world and you can do anything and you can as father said because it launches you on a whole new life we been talking with Father Edward Looney. We're going to be back. He's the with him after this break. He's the pastor of Sacred Heart Parish in Wisconsin. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. This is Dan Laboon Markham with another episode of Country Up at the Bishop Markham Ranch in Goldendale, Washington. Fisher Man. The Columbia River Bar, where the mighty Columbia meets the massive Pacific, is no place for wimps to work. There are hundreds of sobering reasons. Over 200 shipwrecks and many more boats met their demise. As to why this boiling cauldron of water is rightly called the Graveyard of the Pacific. 
My great-grandfather, a stalwart, virtuous man and lay preacher, was one of the pioneering fishermen who came to Oahu, Washington, to strike it rich on salmon in the 1870s, a time when ships were made of wood and men of iron. My ancestors faced this very water in 30-foot sailboats, not unlike those on the Sea of Galilee. Give some understanding as to why Jesus chose commercial fishermen as four of the twelve apostles. Hardy souls, these men, men of perseverance, willing to take risks to face death and then go at it again. As you may recall, Jesus called James and John the sons of thunder. Having worked on fishing boats, I know a little something about fishermen who thunder. Colorful, raw language, raw emotion, and the sheer force of will. Suffering persecution and the threat of death, those boys stood up for what was right, pushing through the storms of life. It's time for men of the church to heed the call to be men of virtue and perseverance for the sake of righteousness, ever pressing upstream with God's truth as a flow of culture pushes back against what is right, true, just, and good. Be a fisherman. Get on board and grab an oar. This is Dan Laboon Markham at countryup.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. We invite our mama bears to join with us at deepadventure.com. You'll have access to all of the Long Ride Home TV shows even before they air on EWTN. Plus, three years of the shareable Ocean Sunrise daily catechism videos. Plus, at deepadventure.com, a 20% discount at our online store with all of our great t-shirts and clothes and books and rosaries and medals and all kinds of accessories. You'll also get an autographed copy of Bear's latest book, and for a limited time, a Catholic biker stuffed teddy bear. All at deepadventure.com. Come on, Mama Bears, let's hear you roar. Did you know that each Saturday morning you can receive the shareable YouTube video version of the Bear Wozniak adventure in our inspiring weekly newsletter, even before it airs on the radio or hits the podcast apps? Never miss another episode. You can even binge watch Bear's inspiring guests. Think about the impact you can have sharing these videos with your friends. Go to deepadventure.com and click the subscribe button. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I want to invite everybody to, to go to uh, deepadventure.com or amazon.com or Sophie Institute. or I think it's going to, the book will be in uh, most of the Barnes & Noble stores and other stores like that. Go, go pick up the book or get, get several of them, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? Uh, women, you know who, who needs to have this book. It might be a, a younger son of yours. It might be your brother-in-law. It might be your husband. Uh, men, I, I had a friend of mine uh, recently who bought 20 books uh, for his friends, a, a book that he really ignited him. Uh, that This is what you should do, too. Grab the... Get this book, give it to your friends, and invite them over to be on the on the on the back deck with you and have a cigar and a shot of whiskey and talk about these twelve rules. We're talking with a friend of mine, uh, I, uh, Father Edward Looney. I consider him friend because we have a common friend, Mike Stark, who uh, who uh, uh, had mentioned both of us to each other. We finally just got to meet recently, but Father, I feel like we're of kind of um, kindred spirits. Um, who is Father Edward Looney, the pastor of Sacred Heart Parish? His podcast is. Uh, how how do you exactly say your podcast again? Oh, how yeah, it's how they love Mary. How they love Mary, and so let's dig into that now. So you you be, went to the process of becoming a priest, and then I love the fact that priests go to uh, philosophy and then theology, and they just go deeper and deeper. How did your pursuit of Mary and theology? What what drew you to her? And tell us the, the what that means yeah. to you. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it was, again, going back to those pilgrimages as a young person. For whatever reason, Mary just captivated my interest. And I, I think it was that lady in the parish who planned trips to Europe, to that Marian apparition site. And uh, just hearing those stories always gave me a great love for her. I, I think, too, in my own life, my mother was kind of... Uh, 
not to say neglectful, but you know, she just wasn't around uh, as much, uh, wasn't as maternal as she could or should have been. And I think sometimes I turn to Mary uh, as a way to uh, maybe fill up that lack of maternal love. And that's really kind of looking back. That's where I see the trajectory of maybe how Mary and devotion came about in my life. Uh, but uh, I always had an interest in Marian theology and reading books about Mary. And I remember even in high school, this is kind of like a little bizarre story, but uh, many of many people might remember a, a Catholic apologist and author named Bud McFarlane. He wrote a book. He wrote like mm. three novels. One was called Pierced by a Sword. One was House of Gold. One was Yeah, I know uh, Bud. Yeah, Sin. yeah now, I know him. Yeah. I, really, I only read Pierced by a Sword, but uh, I... I remember in high school, and I went to a public high school, but I I read a, a book for a book report, and I think we could pick any book, and then we were even encouraged to write the author and to see if the author would write us back. And so I read Pierced by a Sword, and I just remember this little, like, the Miraculous Medal had a very strong uh, presence in the book, and I, I've often thought that I wanted to go back now as I'm older and maybe would appreciate it more, but uh, I wrote him, and I remember him writing back, and he answered the questions I sent him and whatnot. So uh, so I guess, you know, just reading books about Mary was something that was what I did, you know, and I... Uh, in my theological studies, I went to Mundelein Seminary, so I was there when Bishop Barron was the rector of the seminary, mm -hmm. and uh, so um, in the coursework, whether it was biblical studies or history or whatever, it seemed that I would tailor my research to a Marian topic because I was very interested in that. And so, you know, I wrote papers on the perpetual virginity of Mary or on, you know, the marriage of Joseph and Mary or... Uh, you know, many other topics as well. And uh, Bernard of Clairvaux actually was one, one of the one uh, one person that I wrote on his Mariology. And in fact, when I got an STL, a license in sacred theology, I, I focused heavily on the Assumption Sermons of St. Bernard. So um, a, a, anyways, just kind of in that study, uh, tailored my focus of wanting to know the, the Marian studies, if you will. And uh, I, I became familiar with the Mariological Society of America, which is a group of scholars from all over the world. Uh, you know, it's an American society, but there are members from England or from wherever in the, in the world. And uh, we gather once a year, we talk about the Blessed Mother, we usually discuss a certain theme and uh, so when I was a seminarian, I, I gave a paper. They, they accepted my topic. I delivered the topic. Uh, and I kept going uh, to these conferences all throughout my priesthood. And uh, now I'm the president for a few more months of that society. So it's kind of like uh, you know, jumping in when you're a kid and then, uh, and then you learn how to swim and uh, you become a leader in that big pool. And, uh, and so... Uh, that's kind of the story of Marian studies in my own life. And uh, w one of the things I love doing, and so that's the whole premise of the book, How They Love Mary, is simply uh, I, I had noticed in my research that I had tailored a lot of study on individuals and what their writings about Mary, what their theology of Mary was. You know, it started with Thomas Merton, but then, it's, then it evolved into other individuals. And, uh, you know, so How They Love Mary is kind of the fruit of all that, of how have key figures of Catholicism or key figures of Catholic life in my life, you know, these holy men and women, how did they model devotion to Our Lady? And so that's that's kind of what I've enjoyed studying when it comes to the Blessed Mother. Well, if some, by the way, Bud McFarlane's very special to me. There was something kind of miraculous happened. There was a little book that was written about it. Uh, I introduced him to someone. I don't know if you know Bud now in these days, but but a uh, very sacred, uh, holy time. He was with this this very special person. Met her met her just about the time that she was dying, uh, and so it was just very sacred time. So praise God for Bud. If you're listening, Bud McFarland, we love you. Um, so I won't go any deeper than that. But now let's break this down to Father. Um, if someone doesn't doesn't uh, really have a, an experience of Mary, doesn't have a devotion to Mary. Um, you know, it's so easy to pick out that rosary and just just pray through it, blitz through it. Um, 
how can someone what, a, a beginner how would someone grow what would is there a book your book obviously um oh how how do you, how do you say it again how they love her how they love, how Mary? They love me. yeah uh, but how would you suggest someone just start or if they've they've, they've kind of lost their way with that how would someone start fresh right now in their journey towards our mother our lady yeah that's a question i get a lot and i always give the same answer and i think it really begins the, the first thing if you don't have a devotion to the blessed mother what you should do is you should ask jesus to introduce you to his mother so like even in your prayer like just jesus i want to know your mother more and so please help me with that show me how she can be a mother to me and I think, too, going through the different uh, biblical passages of Mary's words, and I actually did this in a book called... Well, let's talk about that. There's so few passages, but they're so powerful. Yeah, so... Oh, uh, talk about you, those passages. Yeah, you have the Old Testament, of course, that we could refer to, but um, in, in terms of the New Testament, her words, so uh, the Annunciation. Just the fact that she asks, how can this be? You know, she, she wants to know, well, how does, how can this be since I've had no relations with a man? Like, she, she understands what the angel said, but, but she's seeking clarification. But, of course, the Annunciation, the, the big moment for her is when she says, let it be done to me according to your word. And mm. that's powerful. That's Mary's yes to God. And, and so... Uh, when she said yes in that moment, she didn't know where that yes was going to lead her all throughout her life. And so that's a profound yes. So so I think if we just look at those words of Mary in the scriptures or um, looking at her song of praise at the visitation, if we look at her example of just treasuring. Well, what, but what was that song of praise? What's, what's yeah. your paraphrase of it? Yeah, that's the Magnificat. So my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. He has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. And that's pretty profound. All that generations. That is, yes. Because, because Mary is saying, this is what people are going to do. And here we are. We're repeating. Every time we pray the Hail Mary, we say, blessed are you among women. And so every generation has indeed called her blessed. And the fact that all of these people have written books about her throughout the centuries, they've preached homilies about her, they've painted images, paintings of her, you know, she's one of the most painted people in the history of, of the world. So uh, she now, has fascinated people. We have to take a break. You know, it's interesting, Father, how our conversation has, as we've progressed, when we began to talk about Mary, you much more animated. You can tell that there's a great joy there and love for Mary. Uh, how can people find you, Father, your, your podcast and your books? Sure. So podcast is How They Love Mary and uh, the books. You just search my name on on uh, Amazon or wherever you buy books. And uh, yeah, I, I'm on all social media at the handle at FR Edward Looney. Father Edward Looney, uh, pastor of uh, Sacred Heart in Wisconsin, Shauna, Wisconsin. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. People love our EWTN TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. Thanks to you, the show has won four different tally awards. And now, instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air, you can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the Mama Bears or the Man Cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link, or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. 
When you go to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel, you get access to all of our free playlists, including hundreds of episodes of the Bear Wozniak Adventure, plus the three-year journey through the whole catechism in our Ocean Sunrise Catechism series. And you even get short clips and live streaming of Bear and Cindy's Adventures in Paradise videos. Go to YouTube and subscribe to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure channel. still listening i thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station well you asked for it here is more of the bear wasnick adventure aloha welcome back to the bear wasnick adventure did you know that long ride home season four we just uh uh sent it to ew10 it may even be airing by the time this show comes out uh, I don't know what night our show is on. you got to check it out for yourself with the EW10 Network. But Long Ride Home Season 4, 11 episodes, all filmed here in Hawaii. With our, the same pack riding motorcycles here, but getting them out on outrigger canoes and, and other experiences, uh, giving them the chance to really experience the beauty of Hawaii. And we invite you to join us there, too. And you know what? If you go to deepadventure.com, and, uh, and you become a mama bear or you become a member of the man cave in the School of Manliness, uh, among all the other things that you, you have access to, you, you get all of those, all 33 episodes of Long Ride Home. The YouTube version, too, you have access to that special link. That's a private link. And so if your friends are over and you want to do a little evangelizing, just cl click on the, that motorcycle TV show. We have so many men, especially men who, are, who have been converted just by flipping channels and wanting to watch a motorcycle show and they end up finding the Lord and finding the church. So, uh, or you can also watch it on Prime Video. That's, uh, um, that's uh, we're in the we're process of getting the, their, uh, their final tech approval. But Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak, there's 22 episodes up on Prime now. 11 more episodes are going up to Prime Video on the EWTN network. But come and, come and join us, become part of the Mama Bears or the, or the Man Cave and you get all those episodes among other things uh, 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 sent to you and you have access to him uh, as, as long as you would like. So we're talking with Father Edward Looney, and we're talking about, uh, really, Father, y y your devotion to Mary. And uh, you know, you contrast that with, let it be done according to thy word. The temptation of Eve was, ha has, God, has God not said, you know? It was doubting God's word. And so what a huge thing for her to be the one that said, you know, how are you going to do this? But it doesn't matter to me. I'm going to do it anyway. I, I don't, may not understand it, but, but the Lord did say the Holy Spirit would come upon her just as the Holy Spirit came upon, uh, you know, the, the water in the time of the creation. So tell us more. I'd like to dig into those scripture verses uh, that show us who Mary is. You know, when you read the Gospel of John, you see Mary, don't you? Right off the yes. bat. Because he had that relationship with her. Tell us about that. Very cosmic. Yeah, yeah definitely. So in uh, the, the Gospel of John, it's right there in John chapter 2, is the wedding feast of Cana. So, and then uh, as John's Gospel unfolds, of course, Mary's there at the foot of the cross. And, um, but the wedding feast of Cana, that's also such a profound event in, in the fact that Mary notices a need. That's what I always think. You know, one of the Holy Fathers called her the attentive virgin. Actually, it was Paul VI. He called Mary the attentive virgin. And he was talking about that in a different context. But I took that title of Our Lady. And I said, well, that's who she is at the, at the wedding feast of Cana. That's what she, my wife said. Mm, go ahead. Oh, yeah. No, that's who she is. Just that's what, notice. That's what my wife is like when we're out and about. Uh, I'll be engaging with people. We'll be engaging, but then she'll she'll whisper me something that she's discerning, very clear to her, but not obvious to me. Uh, they mention this. They may need. They may you may want to talk with them more about that particular thing. But think about it. When when I when I read the first the first chapter of John, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word is with God, and the Word was God. Through Him all things came to be. Nothing came to be except through Him. When Mary said, let it be done according to thy word, you know, speaking of the word of God, um, and then I just think that real cosmic first chapter, somehow I kind of have a feeling Mary and John had a lot of deep conversations, and that came out of that, because she lived with him for a while, I think, well, the tradition says up in Ephesus, and he took care of her after, the, after right, Jesus said, here is your mother. Think about how 
think about John and how can we pattern our relationship with Mary after John? Yeah, and in the Gospels it says immediately from that hour he took her into his home. So, uh, so the fact that he lived with her, she lived with him. Uh, you know, there, there's this great tradition that the apostles they sought the motherly advice and counsel of the Blessed Mother, and uh, there, there are beautiful portrayals of this in cinema. Like uh, there was a movie full of grace that kind of captured it. I thought pretty well. Also, too, Roma Downey had a movie called The Resurrection, and uh, that came out on Discovery Plus a few years ago now, but a powerful portrayal of the Blessed Mother that after the crucifixion, after he's entombed, the apostles, they're coming to her, and, and she says in the film, she says, uh, can you not just wait three days? He said three days and he would come back. And so, you know, in that in that cinematic expression of Our Lady, well, the deep faith that she had, that he talked about this, and so we have to believe him and we have to wait for him. And, you know, Mary perseveres with the apostles. She's there with them in the upper room at Pentecost. You know, when it comes to the resurrection too, there's always that question. St. Ignatius poses it in his spiritual exercises. Did Jesus appear to his mother? And I, of course, I think he did. And uh, that, but it's not recorded for us in the scriptures. But there's so much there that even just in our own imaginative prayer, like that's what Ignatius would say that, you know, imagine Jesus appearing to his mother Mary. But here's another one that, that a profound image to maybe sit with during these years of Eucharistic revival Mary receiving Holy Communion from the hand of St. John. That St. John would have celebrated. Yes. And, oh, gosh. And, and that union that, that uh, Mary would have had. You know, the assumption is the moment where Mary has that union with God once again with her son, but she had it every time she received Holy Communion. And there are beautiful images of this. I'm told that at Hansville in Alabama, it, it, that that's an image in the stained glass windows. Now, when I was there, I did not see it. But I, I think that uh, it must be in the cloister section, and so you oh, can't. Oh, I bet see. it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah. when I was down in Rockford, Illinois, with the poor Claire Colatine sisters down there, they have that beautiful image of John giving Holy Communion to oh, Mary. Oh my goodness! I never thought of that. Yeah. So oh, profound. Uh, I, for me, that's been a, a, a beautiful image just to to sit with. A lot of times after Mass, like. What was it like for Mary to have received her Lord, to pray at Mass? And, um, you know, we believe that the Mass is, you know, is the representation of Calvary. And so that, that Mary mm. is there at the foot of the cross of Calvary. So, so Mary stands by the priest as he celebrates the Mass. Uh, and that's, again, another image of Do you mean even You mean even to this day? In the representation, she would have to, she would be there. She would. There's uh. a little prayer that the priest can say, it's in the back of the missal, it's like a prayer before the Mass, like a, a personal prayer for the priest to prepare. And and it says, you know, like, uh, I, I kind of have rewritten it because I didn't memorize it exactly, but it was like, I, I, I say this prayer often, you know, Mary, stand by me now as you stood by the foot of the cross wow. as I celebrate the Mass, you know? Uh, so that, that can be a prayer too, and how we can look to and relate to Mary. Well, you know, um, I was with Father Don Calloway. I think we talked about this maybe when I was on your show in Israel, and uh, his mother was with him. And the way that their relationship was it just reminded me so much of Jesus and Mary because she was anticipating what he might need or what we might need. And she was kind of like, in so, a lot of ways, the go-between because he was very busy, of course. And But she would always like, oh, you needed to bring, he, I don't know what she would be bringing. Maybe it's a book or a, a bulletin or, or she would bring to him what we, what we might need, like everyone needs to stop for the bathroom, or, or, um, or he would, or it was just wonderful to see them, the play between them, and how much he loved his mom, and how uh, that's a picture of, you know, you, it's like, you know, <clears throat> I remember being in a situation when I, I, I experienced a powerful uh, infusion of the Holy Spirit and Catholic charismatic renewal, Jesus, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and I didn't understand Mary. I mean, why do we need Mary? I've got this. You know, and so <clears throat> I didn't reject Mary, but I just said, Lord, I'm going to put this over here on the shelf over here. And when you have when you when it's time, please explain this to me so I can understand it. And I would say the beginning of that journey for me was at Lourdes. 
I was surfing a contest in Bay Ritz, France, and I saw that Lourdes was only 90 miles away or something. So I jumped in a car. Well, I better get over there because this the Pope is coming. And I don't want to be there for the Pope. He was doing a, a visit there because I hadn't quite returned to the church yet. But I went to Lourdes, and I think that was the beginning of her, of, of my experience of the devotion to her. We're talking with Father Edward Looney, a uh, pa- parish priest at Sacred Heart in Shawano, Wisconsin. How can people find you, Father? Sure, social media, at FR Edward Looney. And uh, the books I've written, I think someone told me the other day, there's 10 of them. There's three books for children, a few devotional uh, books about Mary as well, uh, for all people of all ages. And uh, and so you can find those by searching my name on Amazon or wherever you buy Catholic books. Can you uh, uh, pray the Hail Mary for us? Sure. Uh, And so we ask the intercession of Mary that she might notice every need that we have and that she might pray for us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. Until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Thanks for listening to the Bear Wasting Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wasting Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell.